Okay, so Apple's launching a new iPhone and it's going to be called the iPhone 9 and here's everything you need to know about it because this is going to be a pretty interesting device. This video is sponsored by Fast Hosts and they told me to ask you a question of my choice and if you answer it correctly, then you'll have a chance to win something pretty amazing. And the question is, what is the standard range, so the baseline range, of a Tesla Model 3? And I'll come back with some more details on this competition by the end of the video. Okay, so yeah, the iPhone, the iPhone 9, if you think about it, it doesn't make a lot of sense because Apple, well, there are quite a few generations of iPhones that Apple has skipped and the iPhone 9 is actually one of them. You see, Apple used to have a very consistent naming scheme. They started with the iPhone, uh, then they moved on to the iPhone 3G, which was the second one, then the iPhone 3GS, then the 4, the 4S, the 5, the 5S, the 6, the 6S, the 7, the 7S. Well, not really, because there was no iPhone 7S, just the iPhone 8, followed by the iPhone 10 right after, uh, which was actually announced at the exact same event as the iPhone 8 was. Okay, so Apple skipped the iPhone 7S, the iPhone 8S, the iPhone 9, the iPhone 9S, so they still have four names left, or even five if you consider that Apple never actually had an iPhone 2. Okay, so what's this whole deal about this iPhone 9 then? Well, you see, aside from the usual iPhone models, Apple has also had a few cheaper alternatives. The first one being the iPhone 5C, followed by the iPhone SE, and then the iPhone XR. The 5C and the iPhone XR were both less expensive versions of the highest-end iPhones that Apple was selling at that time. So the iPhone 5C, which was sold alongside the iPhone 5S, was an iPhone 5 in a plastic body. The iPhone XR was a more trimmed down version of the iPhone XS with an LCD display, a single camera module versus the dual camera module one that we had on the iPhone XS, 3GB versus 4GB of RAM, and an aluminum frame rather than the stainless steel frame that we had on the XS. So cheaper materials and slightly inferior specs, but overall, the exact same experience as on the more expensive models. Then in 2019, we sort of got the exact same thing with the iPhone 11, which was the successor to the iPhone XR, which now got a brand new name, a better name. I would say. So the only iPhone that was noticeably different from the rest was the iPhone SE. This iPhone was launched back in March 2016, six months after the introduction of the iPhone 6S, and it basically had all the exact same specs as the iPhone 6S had. So the SE came with an Apple A9 processor, 2GB of RAM, and even the exact same storage options that the iPhone 6S came in. The only differences were that it came in the body of the iPhone 5 from 2012, it had a noticeably worse display in terms of the color, uh, the brightness and the viewing angles, and while the back-facing camera was the exact same one as on the iPhone 6s, the front one was the same one as on the iPhone 5. However, that iPhone was incredibly well received amongst the public, the SC. Uh, it sold extremely well and it still fully supported hardware and software-wise even four years after its release, which is <laughs> pretty impressive. Now, ever since 2017, there's been a ton of reports that Apple is actually working on the iPhone SE 2. We've had a ton of leaks that were either showing uh, the iPhone 6S's design with improved specs or even a brand new design based on the iPhone 10's uh, just with a squared off frame and also a smaller form factor. But unfortunately, even though the SE 2 was one of the most leaked and hyped iPhones from the past few years, it never really saw the light of the day. There's been many reports that it's been cancelled internally and those reports do indeed seem to be true. I believe that Apple wasn't 100% sure on what actually made the iPhone SE 1 successful. Was it the low price or was it the small form factor? Uh, they've made a few experiments in the upcoming years by keeping the old iPhones such as the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8 on sale years after brand new iPhone models have been launched. Uh, and they also kept the price quite low, uh, but one, those iPhones do not have the latest specs like the iPhone SE had, and then two, those iPhones are still more expensive than the $399 price point that the iPhone SE started at. So this brand new iPhone 9 that's coming out very, very soon is essentially this new iPhone SE 2, which has apparently been revived, and uh, there's quite a few new things about it. So the first report about the iPhone 9 came out in May 2019 from Barclays analyst Blaine Curtis, who claims that uh, based on a few supply sources in China, uh, they mentioned a potential iPhone SE 2 with iPhone 8 internals uh, that would be coming out in early 2020. This was after many reports that the iPhone SE 2 was cancelled, which we got in late 2018. And we haven't really heard anything regarding the iPhone SE 2 until September 2019, uh, right around the time when, you know, the new iPhone 11s 
were launching. Now, Nikkei, a pretty reliable source when it comes to Apple leaks in general, they reported that Apple will be launching a new low-cost iPhone, which Apple is viewing as the latest generation of the iPhone SE. So this will be very similar to the 4.7-inch iPhone 8 that was launched back in 2017 design-wise, while sharing the exact same specs as the flagship iPhones of the year. This also matches up with Economic Daily News' reports from April 2019, and they actually claim the exact same thing. Then, in October 2019, Ming-Chu Kuo, by far the most reliable analyst when it comes to Apple leaks, confirmed that Apple plans on releasing a low-priced iPhone SE 2 with the same design as the iPhone 8, an Apple A13 chip, and 3 gigabytes of RAM in uh, early 2020. Now, Kuo also believes that this would be the best upgrade option for people who are still using an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 6S and prefer having the same design just with updated specs. And I mean, um, wow, the, uh, the Apple A13 processor is just a beast of a chip. Like, that's what we already have on the iPhone 11s, and it's so powerful that it even outperforms most low to mid-range laptop CPUs out there, including Apple's own 13-inch MacBook Pro. And yes, I'm talking about the latest 2019 model. And in fact, CPU-wise, the iPhone 11s are even more powerful than a 15-inch 2017 MacBook Pro. And the single core performance is even higher than on the maxed out 16 inch MacBook Pro that literally just came out with the Intel 9980HK processor, which, uh, fun fact, is Intel's highest end laptop processor that they currently make. So that's, uh, that's pretty insane. So I'm pretty surprised that Apple will be including the exact same chip inside the iPhone SE 2 slash the iPhone 9. And speaking of that, why do I keep saying iPhone 9 and not iPhone SE 2? Well, uh, that's because Mako Takara, another pretty reliable source when it comes to Apple leaks, claims uh, that according to an informed source, Apple will be launching the iPhone 9 and not the iPhone SE 2. So this will be the actual name of the iPhone SE 2. Pretty interesting. And they also claim that aside from the name uh, and aside from the iPhone 8's body, it will also come with, like I said, the Apple A13 chip, which Minchuko also reported. It would also lack 3D touch, which is something that the iPhone 11's removed and something that the original iPhone SE also lacked. And to put a cherry on top, OnLeaks, who's had an amazing track record in the past few years and whose renders turned out to be pretty much 100% correct, uh, he posted his final renders on the iPhone 9. So from his renders, the iPhone 9 looks very similar to the iPhone 8, the 7, the 6s, the 6, but with a few small differences. Um, the main one being the thickness, which according to OnLeaks, the iPhone 9 would actually be 7.8 millimeters thick, which is actually 0.5 millimeters thicker than uh, the iPhone 8. The other dimensions are said to be identical to the iPhone 8. And fun fact, the iPhone 6 from 2014, that was actually the thinnest iPhone that Apple has ever made, and just 6.9 millimeters thin. Then came the famous Bengate controversy, if you guys remember that, and Apple switched to 7000 series aluminum with the iPhone 6s, and they made the whole chassis thicker at 7.1 millimeters. Then the iPhone 7 stayed the same at 7.1, the iPhone 8 got thicker uh, to 7.3 millimeters, and then the iPhone 10 got even thicker to 7.7 millimeters. The XS had the same 7.7 millimeters thickness, but the iPhone 11 got thicker once again at 8.1 millimeters. I'm talking about 11 Pro. Okay, now remember the question that I've asked you guys at the beginning of the video? I told you that if you answer that correctly, then you had the chance to win something pretty special. So I'll repeat the question once again. Uh, the question is, what is the standard range of a Tesla Model 3? If you're in the UK and you get the answer right, then you have a chance of winning two tickets to South by Southwest 2020 in the US, which also includes flights and accommodation. And all of this is provided thanks to Fast Hosts. Now, in case you're not familiar with Fast Hosts, they're based in the UK and they offer a wide range of web hosting services from things such as domain names to business email addresses, full on web hosting services on their SSD servers. They have their own website builder, which is extremely easy to use by the way, yet very, very capable. They have their own e-commerce store builder. They offer you an entire Office 365 subscription across all of your devices and so, so much more. FastHost is essentially the complete toolkit when it comes to launching an online business. To answer the question, simply click on the link in the description. And thanks again to FastHost for sponsoring this video and good luck to everyone. Now, I personally don't really have a problem with phones getting a bit thicker in order to increase the battery life because the iPhone 11 Pro Max had an absolutely outstanding battery life. So I would trade um, thinness for battery life at any point in time. But I'm guessing that if you were to put an iPhone 6 next to an iPhone 9, you would easily be able to tell the difference in thickness between the two. And even from Onyx's renders, the iPhone 9 does look like a pretty thick boy. Now, as you can probably see from OnLeaks' renders, he did have this uh, with a stainless steel frame as opposed to the aluminum frame that we have on the iPhone 8. 
and he also added a frosted glass back, but according to him, these are just uh, predictions and assumptions that he's made, not something that's actually based on leaks. And personally, even though this looks amazing, I really don't think that Apple will be doing anything like this. I really do think that the design would look identical to the iPhone 8's design, aside from the thicker uh, body and also the larger camera module. That's because you see the whole idea of this phone is for it to be a cheap iPhone or, you know, a low cost iPhone. Um, and for Apple to keep the price as low as possible, they would need to make some trade-offs. And stuff like a frosted glass back or a stainless steel frame, these are quite expensive materials that would increase the cost of the phone, rather than having, you know, an aluminum frame uh, and just a regular glass. Reason why I really do see Apple keeping the same materials as they had on the iPhone 8. So we actually modeled our very own concept to show you guys how we believe the iPhone 9 would look like. Uh, we only model this in white slash silver, but we do expect Apple to maybe launch a bunch of other color options. Uh, I would say gold and space gray are pretty much certain. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple adds a few more, like red or maybe even a shade of blue or midnight green, that would be quite cool. Now, the display is pretty much going to remain identical to the iPhone 8 in terms of the resolution, the brightness and the color accuracy. Uh, so this will be indeed a pretty massive upgrade from the original iPhone SE's display, even though it would not be as good as something like we have on the iPhone 11 or even the iPhone 11 Pros, especially the 11 Pros. And taking a look at the back, we do have a camera module which is actually a bit larger than the iPhone 8's camera. So. Uh, which camera is this iPhone going to have in that case? Well, judging by what Apple has done in the past with the original SE, it is very likely that the iPhone 9 will come with the exact same main camera module as the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro. The iPhone 11 does have an ultra-wide camera module as well, and the iPhone 11 Pros, they have both ultra-wide and a zoom slash telephoto lens, both of which will be missing from the iPhone 9. But this, in combination with a powerful Apple 13 processor, would allow the iPhone 9 to record 4K 60 video and take all those outstanding images that the iPhone 11s were so, so praised for. Now, when it comes to the front-facing camera, this is very likely going to be the exact same one that we got with the iPhone 8 back in 2017. So, that would make it a 7 megapixel sensor with an f2.2 aperture and 1080p 30 video recording. Yeah, this would be a massive downgrade from the 4K 60 capable camera on the front that we have on the iPhone 11s, but of course, that will be paying much, much less for this phone. Okay, so how much will the iPhone 9 cost? Well, Ming Chi Kuo, he did report that the iPhone 9 would start at $400, $399, which is pretty awesome. This is actually $50 less than what Apple's currently charging for the iPhone 8 at the moment. Uh, but keep in mind that the iPhone 8 is the same phone that came back in, uh, came out back in September 2017. So it's already two and a half years old, while the iPhone 9 would have specs that just came out six months before for an even lower price. Kuo also expects 64 and 128 gigabyte options and silver, space gray, and also red color options for the iPhone SE 2 slash iPhone 9. And we've actually had a very interesting leak by uh, Digitimes who claimed that based on some supply chain sources, Apple would be releasing an iPhone 9 Plus as well with a 6.1 inch display or a 5.5 inch display as well. Uh, but unfortunately that won't be launching until the end of 2020 or even early 2021. Okay, so the iPhone 9 is looking um, is looking like a pretty decent iPhone. It costs $400 and offers the same specs and also the same main camera as the iPhone 11, which starts at $700. But you see, the, the, the problem that I have with Apple, uh, or at least with their approach, is that they're just... They're just lazy. Like seriously, Apple, you're you're you know over a trillion dollar in value as a company. Uh, you're by far the richest tech company in the world, about 14 times more valuable than what Tesla is currently worth, by the way. Um, and Apple can't even come up with a new design for the iPhone 9. Instead, they have to use the exact same design that they launched six years ago. You see what I mean? Apple, just stop recycling all designs and start making new designs. You have enough money to do that, so just do it. Like, take a look at OnePlus. They're now releasing four new designs every single year. Apple isn't even, isn't even doing that for flagship iPhones, uh, where we still have the exact same design, the iPhone X design from 2017 on, you know, the latest iPhones that we have at the moment in 2020, the iPhone 11 Pros and the iPhone 11, so... Yeah, that's uh, pretty disappointing. But overall, I really do think that this iPhone will sell loads, like millions of units. Uh, it's the perfect iPhone for people who want a new iPhone with the latest specs and the latest camera without them having to spend a fortune. Is it the best phone for $400? Absolutely not. But it's definitely the best and really the only iPhone at that price point. But yeah, let me know in the comments your thoughts on Apple's recycling the iPhone 6's design once again. 
And fun fact, a while ago we made a video in which I talked about why Johnny Ive left Apple. You can watch that video here. And in that video, I found that half of his design team left because they basically had nothing to work on, as Apple kept reusing and reusing all designs. Uh, they were extremely unhappy and they left because, you know, they had nothing to work on. So that was a pretty sad. And uh, it seems like this is what happened with Johnny Ive as well. So definitely watch that video here. And uh, yeah, this has been uh, pretty much it. Definitely subscribe to notifications if you want to see more Leaks Numbers episodes like this one and more interesting tech videos like this one hopefully was. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.